20 to 7. Good morning to you. This is Breakfast with Stephen and Anne. Yeah. Uh, lots of people with lots of lovely views about wedding dresses and whether you should sell them. Um, Sue in Cheshire says, I got married in July 73 and I still have my wedding dress despite being divorced in 1981. It is hanging in a wardrobe in my sewing room. I also still have my veil, tiara, top tier of my wedding cake and the little church that was on the top. That's quite a lot to keep. Yeah. You're a sentimentalist, aren't you? It's quite a lot to keep, Sue, after you got divorced. <laughs> Yeah, but she obviously the, loved the, the wedding cake you can still and all look that. back and think that was a lovely day, can't you? Yeah, I don't, well, I don't know. I've never been divorced. Mm. I don't know. Um, I, I like this one uh, from Jane. Having eventually left an abusive marriage about four years ago, I took mine to the tip. I launched it into the skip, didn't give it a backwards glance. It was totally liberating. I bet it was liberating and you, you yeah, deserved well, it. Yeah, well, good on you. Yeah, yeah. But... Um, Hmm. I think even if you've got divorced, unless it's been, it was a seriously horrible thing, you, you eventually can look back on that day and think that was a lovely, happy day. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, um, Eliza gave her wedding dress to the local amateur dramatic society after my divorce, and they cut it up to use the silk. Yeah. Oh, Sadly, that yeah. happened to my mum's wedding dress. Did she it? gave it to my daughter to, to. She put it in the dressing up box, actually. Oh. And my sister, my sister um, chopped it up. <laughs> So it had many sort of wearings in different styles. Right. After that. But I mean, it was that, that's... beautiful, beautiful silk. You see, and Cheryl said, uh, I didn't sell my wedding dress, but I donated it to St Oswald's Hospice Charity for them to sell as they were short of funds during the pandemic. Yeah. Now that... That I is quite... a great idea. That's a good idea, because yeah. then it's being sort of altruistic. And... Well, some charities have spe special wedding dress... You know, departments mm. um, where secondhand wedding dresses are, you know, and that's a, uh, often a very cheap way to buy a really first class dress. It's only been worn once before. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, your thoughts, please. GB Views at GBNews.com. Right, shall we have a look at today's front pages? The Telegraph leading with the Tory civil war, as they call it, as Boris Johnson hits out at Rishi Sunak after failing to back him over Partygate. The Sunday Express says electoral slaughter is on the cards, as there are concerns, apparently, that more Tory MPs will quit over this civil war. Yeah, three so far. Well, including Boris. In the mirror, uh, Keir Starmer says general election now, as he says Sunak has lost control of the government. And the Sun on Sunday has England and Man United star Marcus Rashford uh, splitting from his fiance. That's a shame, isn't it, to splash somebody's private romance ending? A young person as well, all over the front page of a newspaper. Yeah. I thought we were better than that nowadays. Maybe not. No. Sadly not. Let's see what Deputy Editor of Spike, Fraser Myers, and writer and journalist Emma Wolfe make of it all morning. You Good two. morning. Nice Good morning. See Lovely to see you. Um, Fraser, let's have a look at the mail on Sunday, should we? It's war, they say. Yeah, the, the duel for the soul of the, the Tories. This is due to the um, ongoing fallout of Boris Johnson's uh, resignation. I mean, it's been, you know, only been a few months since the last Tory meltdown. We're overdue uh, a big spat. <laughs> Uh, what essentially is being said is that there will be a civil war, is, or Rishi Sunak will trigger a civil war if he doesn't allow Boris Johnson to crawl back into the Commons, if he's not allowed to be given uh, a safe seat in order to stage uh, his comeback. Now, you know, we, it seems a bit that this civil war is overstated because it's not as if Boris has tons of backers. Um, many more MPs were expected to resign along with him in protest, and they haven't. Um, many of the many of the you know staunchest Boris loyalists have said no, we're staying. Some of them have said we're staying to fight the blob, but others, you know, clearly want to keep their blob seats. Business. <laughs> Where did the blob going on come about? from? It's emerged it, from nowhere. It was it? Um, it was a coinage of Dominic Cummings, I think, um, oh. when he was working in the education department with Michael Gove, and they talked about the blob that was uh, preventing reform. So it sort of referred to this kind of civil service intransigence, the yes minister style um, oh, civil right. service yeah. that won't let anything happen. Um, but you know, let's we should remember that Boris has resigned mainly because he expects that he probably wouldn't survive a vote after the privileges committee. Mm. Um, um, he was essentially told that the Tories are not going to be whipped to save him. Um, and he thinks that they would you know, vote in favour of this report, which would then trigger a by-election. And he probably wouldn't win the by-election either. So we do have to take his claims with a little bit of a pinch of salt. He is trying to avoid the judgment of Tory MPs, avoid the judgment of the electorate. Um, so for him to say... Um, you know, that he's being cheated is a little bit rich. Although I think there are problems with this kind of report. 
And it's not even clear that actually, that we don't know that Boris actually wants to be re-elected or re-selected anywhere no. else. Mm. We know that he's trousered a lot of cash in the few months, in the last few months, in the region of millions. We know that he's bought a very, very expensive um, house, you know, in the vicinity of Oxfordshire and somewhere near Henley, um, possibly. Um, but I think that he's a man that doesn't like to be told he's in the wrong. He's he's angry. We see that from his statement. He's angry. He feels that he's been told off. Um, and as you say, he doesn't want to sort of be thrown out. So he's decided to walk before he's pushed and, you know, raise his, raise his fingers at the government as he goes. And, yeah, so and there's lots of speculation as as here. Mm. Well, it has caused a fuss, yeah, but is it really a civil war yet? Mm. Well, I think I would... I, I mean, I'm sure Fraser knows more about this, but I mean, it does seem to be something fundamentally, after 13 years of Tory rule, there is something fundamentally broken about the party now. When you compare them, even comparing them to Labour, who do seem, for all their faults, they do seem to be moving in one direction, whereas the Conservative Party, not just for 12 months, for, twi you know, for, for a couple of years now, they've been all over the place. So many factions, so much discontent. It, it's kind of close to... So Mind you, I'll, I'll tell you what really irritates me, though. And that's and it does. I say it's not party political because they all do it when they're in opposition. But the Sunday Mirror yeah. has got Keir Starmer demanding a snap general yeah. election. <laughs> well, it, it isn't going to happen. No. He knows it's not going to happen. But what's he meant to do? Like, he's the leader of the opposition. Well, it's like, come on. He, so he he's immediately come out and said this farce must stop. People have had enough of the uh, of the farce of Tory rule. Let the people have their say on 13 years of Tory failure. Um, he says that the prime minister is not strong enough to stand up to his party. That he can't lead his party. Um, which is a bit odd, actually, because it's, you know, it's Boris Johnson who's causing the trouble in the last few days, not, not Rishi Sunak, who's quietly travelling the world and getting on with his job, or trying to get on with his job. But, yeah, this is obviously Keir Starmer's coming out and saying, time for a general election, as if that's going to solve the issue. Yeah, Imagine yeah. that. Six, that would six, be terrible. Weeks. I mean, there couldn't, there couldn't be one soon anyway, because we've got three by-elections that are going to have to be in place. Exactly. I don't think they could snap a general election before that. They? Yeah, and, you know, if MPs resigning is, is one thing, you know, he has. If if it were ministers resigning or something, then it would be legitimate to say that the government is spiralling out of control. You know, the current government has all kinds of problems. It's tanking in the polls. It's, it's failing to. Uh, Rishi is clearly failing to meet all, on all of his missions or pledges or whatever it is they're calling now, priorities. Sorry, they've rebranded it. <laughs> Promises have even rebranded to priorities, which is a sign that you know. It's Ooh, not that's a bit cynical. It's a sign that a sign that things are, are not happening. So there are all those kinds of problems. But the idea that they've lost control in a fundamental way that there's this. You know, split within the actual government is wrong. There is a broader political split in the Tory party, um, which I think is significant. You know, we have moved from a kind of more populist era uh, under Boris. Um, and, you know, that is actually the direction of the party that millions of people voted for. And we've ended up with something very different with Rishi Sunak as a much more kind of technocratic uh, figure. I do think that is a problem, but clearly, you know, Boris is not the man to, uh, I don't know, rediscover the soul of the Tory party because he is such a tainted figure. Um, um, Gra Graham has been in touch, says, totally fed up with hearing about Boris. The Tories will probably lose the by-elections because ruling parties tend to. Let's get it out of the way now. Rishi will still have a majority. Well, he will. Yeah. Yes, he will. Uh, and it's go. up to him as to whether he can make enough of that to mm. well, yeah, uh, at least sustain power. And, and Boris has been going around saying, you know, they're all in Parliament because of me, um, saying it's his, it's his majority, not Rishi's majority. And well, it uh, is. Been squandered, is which, is, which, is, which is, again, it's true to, to a certain extent. Um, I think, you know... Two things can be true at once, which is that Boris did do everything that he was accused of, and we've seen all the pictures of Partygate, and you know that there's no wriggling out of that. But also, there was a kind of um, a desire, let's say, among the sort of establishment, among um, in, in Parliament, even the Tory, many Tory MPs didn't really like him that much, to get rid of him. Whether that's to exact revenge on mm. Brexit, whether it's that's because they don't like his style of politics. Um, for whatever reason, um, yeah, you know, know. he does also have some legitimate gripes, I think. Yeah. Um, let's change tack, just for a, a quick look at the Sunday Express, Emma. And the temperature, another glorious yeah. day. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I don't know, I want the hot weather. And then yesterday I was cycling through London just thinking, this is unbearable, I can't mm. bear this. It's kind of a difficult one, but everybody's looking very tanned. Yeah, um, yeah isn't it great? Yeah. <laughs> it is nice to have a bit of sun, isn't it? Um, yeah, so yesterday we topped Ibiza, we rivaled Ibiza and Rhodes, so we're better than all the holiday destinations. <laughs> it's always a good one when you can say, well, 
I don't need to be on holiday. It was hotter than, yeah. you know, XXX yesterday. Same again today, except, of course, today it's going to trigger, maybe, trigger thunderstorms. So everybody needs to be very, very careful. We've seen these warnings from the, um, you know, the, the health and the heat health warnings about drinking lots of water. And as though people didn't cope with all this back in the 60s and 70s and 50s and 40s. And, you know, there was hot weather before and people did survive. Yeah. And, yes, it's important to look out for older people and it's important to be aware of pets and things like that but I think that we can all just get through it by drinking water we don't need to be sent home from work you no, see no. unions are talking about sending people uh, home and all no. of this like, no no let's get on I with mean it. we have more air conditioning now in modern offices than, than there ever used to be so I think that people can actually cope yes I think we can good point well made uh, Fraser Emma, we've got to leave it there for now but thank you very much indeed see you later on thank you yeah,